Ooh, not bad, team. 4.62. 4.62, not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Reaper team, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, April 8th. Uh, it's around quarter to nine, getting a little bit of a later start today. We had a bunch of storms roll through. It was pouring. Uh, God, I don't even know what time it was, but it woke me up. So I wanted to let those storms pass, and I really kind of wanted to see what the wind's doing. You know, in order to use your troll motor to anchor, like I've been showing you, you guys, it's got to be fairly calm. It can't be blowing, you know, 15 to 20 or greater. You're just not going to hold well. You're going to bounce up and down um, so I, I like to go when it's when it's decent out at least on my on my little boat so it looks like it's blowing west um, which is shielded here in my lagoon so it's, it's tough to tell so I'm gonna go ahead and just sneak out front see what it looks like if not I have a bunch of blood worms so I have a backup plan I'll run up the river um, and it, it'll be shielded back there so let's go see what the ocean looks like yesterday was stellar uh, you know things have changed with the barometer, so we'll see what it does to the tog if we can get out there And uh, I'll see you on the GoPro one more than the other Super pumped man another beautiful day here in New Jersey um, Outside the lee of the land now. It's a west southwest wind You're really not gonna be able to tell when there's a west component to the wind You're not gonna be able to tell until you get for the most part past two to three miles depending on How uh, how hard that west winds blowing or, or northwest or southwest? But at any rate, I'm probably out about five miles now. And uh, knock on wood, it's, it's not too bad. You know, the wind blew really hard south last night. There's definitely a south chop that you can see. You know, that's on top of the continued east swell that is fading. Uh, but I think it's totally doable. This is about as, as rough as I would want to be in, in my 18. Um, it's really not, not all that bad at all. So we're going to push on. Um, I'm going to head to some different wrecks pretty much in the same depth where we had them yesterday at that real productive one. Uh, so let's go from there. But yeah, I'm, I'm uh, super pumped. It's really not bad out here. I think we'll be able to hold with the trolling motor just fine. All right, so we're out on the grounds now. The wind definitely picked up a little bit from when the last time I talked to you. So uh, we'll see, it's gonna be borderline. Let's see, we're bumping up a little bit. What happens is when it's a little too windy and rough, that trolling motor, comes in and out of the water and, and you just won't hold right. So uh, we'll see, I'm approaching the first wreck now. I think we're gonna be all right. Uh, if not, I can always conventional anchor. Uh, if you come out here, you, you gotta know how to do that as well. Uh, in the little boat, it's, it's really easy to do when it's not super rough. Today it might be a little tricky by myself. Um, I'm fishing solo again. Uh, to my, my close knit group of guys, guys, I'm sorry you're not out here with me. Um, I really don't wanna get you sick. We're out here now in uh, 80 foot. Gonna fish a little bit different wreck to start today. Um, that one real good wreck from yesterday, I wanna give it a little chance to breathe for a little while. Uh, I may revisit it if this one doesn't hold, but this one's only about uh, 1.3 miles from where I had them real good yesterday. Same depth, I fished this wreck before. So I'm curious, uh, the sun's coming out. Um, it's not too, too bad out here. Um, this is definitely right on the borderline of what I think is um, ideal for the Riptide Altera. So hopefully she holds. Um, we'll see. Let's get some crabs down there and see if the targets want to bite today. All right, everybody. So quick shout out to Captain Mark Gary from Kid Cochise Outdoors. I'm going to put that link down below. If you're not a subscriber, you need to be. I've already gotten so many tips from him. Um, it just seems like he's an awesome captain. I can't wait to meet him. But that new introduction is right from him. He was nice enough to reach out to me, and he actually went ahead and pulled a bunch of clips off my videos and made that awesome new badass intro. So, Mark, thank you so much. I don't have the ability to do that myself. I just don't have the eye to do it or the computer skills. So thank you so much, man. We've learned so much from your YouTube channel. Keep those videos coming, and yeah, I can't thank you enough, so thanks so much. Um, also, Gary Mercer, I think you're local here in Brigantine. I'm going to go ahead and zoom on in and show you how I make that tog rig, so stand by. 
All right, Gary, you asked for it, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and provide, all right? So just real quick, so 150 pound barrel swivel. For this, uh, we're gonna use 5.0 Gamagatsu Octopus. This is always the hooks that I use for togging now. I use either 4 or 5.0, depending on the size of the crabs. And um, any 50 pound or 40 pound, sometimes 60 pound leader will work. Um, 50 I find is a pretty good number. So uh, let's go ahead and get this going here. Basically this rig is gonna consist of two separate, what I'll call leaders. So first thing, give yourself plenty of room. Give yourself about two foot of the 50 pound mono. Form a loop, we're gonna do a dropper loop. So you form a loop, pinch it right on the sides there, and then you just spin it. Okay, we're just making a dropper loop. So you have a hole there, you take this part of the loop through the hole, grab it with your teeth, pull tight. So there's your dropper loop, all right? Now, what some guys will do is they will go ahead and, and all bright in a long piece of 50 to their braid. Um, I don't like to do that, I'll just do at this leading part of this leader, I'll just tie on the 150 pound barrel swivel. And for this, we'll just do a improved clinch knot. Five or six turn, improved clinch knot, all right? Really easy knot to tie. You can practice it and tie it blindfolded if you want. Okay, so we got our 150 pound barrel swivel our dropper loop, and then just below the dropper loop, what we're gonna do is just form a single loop, and then wrap that loop around itself to form your loop for your sinker. So now we'll cut this tag end off. So what you have, and again, I'll make up 10 to 15 of these before I leave the dock, so Barrel swivel, barrel swivel going to the main line. Dropper loop here where I'll, I'll attach that short leader that I'll show you with the slider rig, and then the dropper loop for your weight. So now what we'll do is we'll take a shorter piece of the 50 or 60, whatever you want to use. All right. To one end, what I'm going to do is do that same loop. All right. So we make a loop. This time, however, I'm gonna wrap around itself twice. So we go through once, pull a little bit, go through twice, and then pull tight. So that's just a double overhand loop. Of course, we gotta have lay in spec. So now, what you have, this will go, well, I'll show you later, but you have a double overhand loop at the top, and now what you want to do is we're going to create our slider rig now. So we take our hook, and you actually get take two hooks, so you slide one on coming through the top part of the eye, and then you slide the other one on also coming through the top part of the eye. Now what a lot of guys will do is they snell this on. I don't find that's necessary. I actually just do a, another improved clinch knot. I just find it's easier, it's a lot quicker. Now this leader, you don't want that long. So I've tied the improved clinch knot. This one's probably just a little too long, but I want you to just get the drift. You want it to be pretty much only about six, maybe eight inches, so about to there, but, but this will do. You'd, on days when there's not a lot of current, this will suffice just fine. So this is called a slider rig. And then what you'll do is you have one hook in one leg socket and another hook in the other. So, and I'll make up 15 of these before we leave the dock as well. And now to complete the actual rig, to complete the rig, what you'll do, I just have a little two ounce bank sinker, but again, typically, you know, out on the wrecks, four to 10 or 12 ounces. So again, you've got your dropper loop, just go it right through the top of the weight, bring the loop out, and then go through the bottom of the weight. And then you pull that loop over the top of the weight. All right, so now you get your weight. And then what we'll do with this double overhand loop, put that through, 
and then pull the hooks right on through and then you pull that tight being sure to get the knot out so now you have just a quick loop to loop and then so now you've got the weight hits bottom and then this has a chance to fall down and rest on the wreck itself and on the bottom and again this is a little bit long but I just wanted you to see the rig so Gary Mercer there you go bub that's our Reaper Tog rig bud Lay is into it right Lay 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 you like that rig honey huh she's such a pretty cat guys my buddy Matt calls her a rusty tog see her colors <laughs> We may have to make them up a little bit. We'll see. Yesterday it was instant. What's tough today though is that we're we're just not sitting totally still on this on the anchor here. And the motor's straining. Well, not too bad. You can see the prop speed there. Yeah, it goes up to six and a half. I don't want to see that. I want to see one to three. So yeah, we're gonna really strain on that motor so it's it's not gonna last that long all right it's fish it's tug they're here okay I'll take it that's so fun it's just so fun I love togging it's just so fun <laughs> That's a keeper. It's a nice fish, actually. <laughs> hey, there you go. All right, they're here, team. It's one. That's beautiful. Not too shabby. All right. Didn't take long. That one hit <clears throat> half of a small white legger. So we know they're here. I had to re rig since I lost my weight. So we're fishing. Let's see. I bought my weight up to eight just so I can stay a little more straight up and down. Wow, that's it. One bite, one fish. Good to show you guys these tog they're so temperamental i mean yesterday was just lights out on the first two wrecks and today i literally catch one right away it's the only bite i've had so far they're temperamental now we're on a full moon so the tides are raging uh, but this time yesterday i was getting bit so i don't know this is why guys do this for a living and they're a heck of a lot better than me all right, so that first wreck really was just that one bite, one fish. I left there to come to the, the wreck that was the best yesterday. Um, I didn't want to do that, but, you know, I want to know if the fish are just off today. Um, and I know they're, that they were just here yesterday. So um, if I get here and I'm not getting bit, then I know they're just off. And I need to wait them out and make up a spot. Um, if they don't make up here after an hour, then, you know, then I know I might need to change depths or... They're just off today and, and we're not gonna catch them. So uh, I know they were here yesterday. So let's give it a good 45 minutes. At least I know I have confidence that, that there's fish holding on this wreck. And um, see, bait up, go from there. Wow, they're off today. What a difference a day makes, team. This just goes to show you, Tog are temperamental creatures. I know there's fish here. I slayed them yesterday. Um, just about the same tide yesterday. Um, what has changed? Not all that much. I mean, the barometer is going to fall big time tonight. Um, you know, it, I'm sure it did some screwy stuff with that storm that I was talking about earlier. Um, we are in a full moon, so, you know, the, the current should be ripping down there, but. You know, one day is not going to make a difference as far as that. I mean, we were here yesterday and slayed them. So why exactly they're off, I don't know. But just goes to show you, 
That's what a difference a day makes. Um, tog are, man, they're tough. You know, that's why I love it. It's the hard that makes it great. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So we'll see. I'm going to give this spot 45 minutes to an hour. If not, then they're just off. And I'll, I don't know. I'll have to get creative. I mean, not a nibble. Wow, guys. Not even a bite. Yesterday, I couldn't keep the rod down. I mean, holy cow. Wow. So I think I know what's off. I, I think it's this southwest wind. I watched a really good seminar. I forget the gentleman's name. I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, but he said south southwest. He hates it. Um, maybe that's what's going on. I mean, it blew hard south last night. It's blowing decent from the south southwest right now. Maybe that's it. You know, yesterday that wind was super light, um, and then it came southeast, not that southwest, that annoying, you know, hard west, southwest, or that annoying, you know, south, southwest. So, I don't know. All right, team, I'm just trying a little bit of everything now. Um, the reef where I had them yesterday seems pretty dead, so I came to some wrecks a little bit inshore. Similar depth, I mean, I'm in 80 foot of water, 85 foot of water. Um, so let's see. I need these fish to start biting. There we go. There's a cap. All right, good. Good bite. Oh, yeah, guys. <laughs> All right. It worked. <laughs> so here they're going, probably be some smaller fish, but my, my plan paid off. I'm excited. First drop right away. Fish. All right. We're back in the game. Keeper. That's a pretty one. Look how beautiful that one is. That's a nice eating size. That's a pretty one. Keep that one. Alright, let's hope this wreck isn't a, a one hit wonder. Saw that yesterday, saw that today. It's a little one. Alright, we're here. I like it. They're getting going. That one bit of green crab. This feels like a good one. Just got a little sharky. Let's see. Oh no. It's another double. <laughs> it's another double. Look at this. <laughs> the other one bounced off. It's another double. Wow. <laughs> another double team <laughs> that's actually really good eating size keep that one all right that's three all right wreck number four this is a tiny little wreck and uh 60 foot of water so i pushed in shore we'll see i'm just kind of trying everything right now uh, this is a tiny little little piece that i know of it's almost been like you get to a wreck Catch a couple and then it's done. So it's uh, definitely been a grind today.
Bow hook. All right, too many shorts here, so uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep sticking and moving. Sticking and moving. We are back at the first reef site. I lost count of how many wrecks we've been to. I'm absolutely soaked from running around. Decent out now. I don't know. Let's see. I'm I'm back deep again. You guys that run uh, center consoles out to the canyons, man, I got all the respect in the world for you. I don't think I could do it. Maybe on the right day for sure, but man, oh man. Oh, that was a good one, team. That was a good one. Broke me right off. Look at that. Broke me clean off. What the hell? I think it's because I had a good amount of scope out and uh, the main line was, I was setting the hook, getting snipped in the wreck. So I added a little bit longer leader. Um, I'll try and let out less scope. Now, and let's see if we can't do that again. That's weird. Get serious again. I was sitting down. I may just stop. Wow. Gone. All right, guys, fourth quarter. We got zero timeouts. I'm soaked. The wind picked up big time out of the north. I'm freezing. It's been a rough day. But I don't accept defeat well. So, down we go. All right, team, so I think I'm going to have to call it a day. You know, that north wind is now ripping. We dealt with south wind in the morning, now it's ripping north northeast. Uh, we worked hard, you know, right now my trolling motor is working hard and uh, it's not really keeping me over the wreck, so that kind of tells us we're done. Alright team, so, yeah, slower, slower than normal day today. That's a nice one. Real dark on that one there. That one is, let's see. Just about, that one's 20 inches. We'll get a weight on that one. 20 inches. This one is 16 and a half inches. Just about, yeah, 16 and a half, 17 inches. See, cool mouths there. I was talking about that. The little people teeth. Super cool. This one here. Look at the. Oh, look at the mouths on these guys. It's so cool. Just really neat looking. These ones are real dark. This one is... Uh, 17. 17. So, 17, just about 17, and what did I say? Just about 20, right? Something like that. So, let's see what this, this one weighs here. Hard to do this to hold the darn GoPro. A lot of says it's too cold out. Let's see, I'm guessing three and change. Oh, not bad, team. 4.62. 4.62, not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> I don't know what that one weighed yesterday. Um, I think between 12 and 15 pounds. So. So that one there's 20 some odd inches. Let's see what a, I'm curious what a 17 incher weighs. So let's see, maybe two and a half pounds. How do you like that? So that one's 17 inches, 3.15 pounds. Cool, all right. Just to get a little bit of a an idea in my head. Um, I usually only weigh the real big ones. Cool, all right, I'm gonna flay these up and uh, So today we're actually going to try a recipe right out of 
on the water magazine. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, you really should be. Uh, their articles are extremely informative and uh, I've been with them for years and years and I pretty much read anything that's applicable to the kind of fishing that I do. But This is from the April 2020 edition and on page 56 we are going to do the recipe tog poppers. So we're going to give that a shot. It seems like we're pretty much for the most part going to make a beer batter out of um, it calls for a 16 ounce beer. I'm just going to use this yinling, um, some all purpose flour and then it sounds like you just kind of make a, a cheese mixture with um, cream cheese and then it calls for pickled jalapenos and obviously the tog fillets themselves. So it says to just cut the tog into, into little squares and then it sounds like you just cut a little slit into the tog fillet. You know, you mix up the, the cheese blend and then you stuff it on in there and you, you fry it in some canola oil. So let's see how it goes. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so it seems like first step, you're really just going to go ahead and mix together the beer and the flour. So we'll add our beer to this, to this bigger bowl. All right. Now, I'm going to spice it up with a little salt, a little pepper, and just a little garlic powder, just to kick it up a notch. Then we're going to add our all-purpose flour. Of course, Alana has organic. I'm not sure if it really matters, of course. So we'll add in some flour. And really, we're just going to try and make this into the consistency that we want in a beer batter. You know, you don't, you don't want it too, too thick, but you also don't want it too thin where it just slides off. So it still seems pretty, uh, pretty thin there. starting to get a little better. There you go. You want the fish to be able to go in there, get coated, but again, you know, actually get some of the mixture on there. That seems pretty good. You can see it adheres to the fork and then it kind of, you know, rolls off from there. You don't want it just rolling right off, so that's pretty good. So we've rinsed off our tog fillets. What I'm going to do now is just cut out this bony part there. Get that out of the way. So now it really calls for the upper part of the fillet. That's where it's pretty thick. So I'm just going to cut these into just about two inch squares. And it seems like what we can do is make a little slit. Yeah, right in there. And then that's where we'll actually go ahead and do the stuffing part. So just take the top part of the fillet Cut them into two inch squares and then make a little pocket for your cheese blend. All right, I see how they're doing it. Cool, so that's really all you gotta do. So again, beautiful tog filet, rinse it off, cut the bones out, use the top part of the filet, two by two squares, cut a little pocket in there, cut a little pocket in there and uh, you're good to go. Um, what I'll do is I'll use the tail piece for, uh, for something different. Next step they say is to take the sliced jalapenos and just cut as much of them as you so desire. These don't smell really all that um, spicy, so I think we're gonna go heavy on the jalapeno. Uh, these don't smell all that all that hot, so I went with a pretty good amount. It says um, just about three to four tablespoons, so I don't know, I'm just gonna eye it up. All right, so we've got our jalapenos all chopped up. Now it says to actually take just one thing of the cream cheese, and then mix it up with the jalapeno. Um, not exactly sure how that's gonna go, but we'll figure it out. So it says to mix up your cream cheese and the jalapeno, but that's a little tough when the cream cheese is still fairly firm. So I'm gonna pop her in the microwave here. Give that maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds, just to loosen up the cheese a little bit so we can, you know, mix everything all together real nice. All right, so I gave it a little over 30 seconds. Oh yeah, much easier. So now we can really mix this all up real good. Wow, it already smells really good. So now we can get all that cheese together with the, the jalapeno. All right, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're actually gonna go ahead and try and stuff the little pieces of tog. 
stuff it right on in. There it goes. All right. I think you're just doing the best you can. Make sure there's a pocket and just stuff it as best you can, I guess. So I'm gonna keep stuffing. Alright team, so I've stuffed our little Todd squares. I did the best I could. I kind of just mashed it in there with a spoon. Sometimes you got to use your thumb to, you know, spread apart the little pocket that you made. So, so now the next step is just to get some canola oil hot in that pan behind me. And then we're going to dip those squares into our beer batter, fry them on up. So it says about a quarter to a half inch of the canola oil. Alright, so let's get that hot. So what we're going to do is just give the beer batter one last little whisk. And then we're going to do the best we can to not unstuff our little tog squares. Get them frying up. Be careful. So it looks like we're pretty golden brown, so let's go ahead and harvest these bad boys. I'd already done a couple in a in another skillet. I'm not so sure how these are gonna come out, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. All right, team, so we are all done. There's the finished product. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I don't know how much of the actual stuffing stayed in there. Also, I've yet to really master the art of beer battered fish. I always seem to make it a little bit too, um, too light in consistency and not thick enough, or make it too thick. Um, normally when I fry fish, I just, you know, coat them with a little bit of egg wash and then uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko and flour. Um, and that I've mastered, but with the beer batter, I always seem to mess it up. I don't get the oil hot enough. I don't get the consistency right. So I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna let them cool off and, and we'll give them a shot and see how so they we are. We got like a little sweet Thai chili sauce. So let's give it a shot here. I'm just gonna grab one, I think. Oh, look at that. I don't know, it looks pretty good, huh? Hot. So far so good. I haven't really tasted much in the way of stuffing yet. Oh, there's a little bit. But you can see, that nice white flaky meat to that tog. Delicious. That's why I harvest these guys. So good. But as I always say, team, you know, be respectful of the ocean. If you're going to release fish, take good care of them. And um, only harvest what you're going to eat. You know, nothing that I killed the last two days is going to go to waste. Um, my wife and I are enjoying fresh tog for dinner. I'll probably eat it all weekend. Um, so don't, don't waste anything you're out there going to kill. And if you're going to release it, treat it respectfully. Well, that's good. You go with the Thai chili? Yeah, it's really good. Did you get some of the jalapeno? I just ate a jalapeno. Oh, I didn't get any. No? Not in that first one. It really wasn't much in the way of jalapeno. You got some? Yeah. Let's see. I just, only because it was hanging off. There's none in that one. Oh, here's one. Hey, that one's got some jalapeno. Let's try. Probably like really hot in temperature. Yeah, so hot. You know you gotta be on the internet. So put me on the internet. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, I got some jalapeno there. That's good. Hmm. Throw me some of that. Yeah. Thai chili sauce. All right, team. Yeah. So I think 
what I needed to do was um, just take a little more time stuffing it and then do a little better job of doing the beer batter. Um, it's not article. No. So the author of the article, Brian Weiss, Brian, if you watch this, throw me a comment on what I did wrong. So I'm curious. But here we go. It's delicious. Thanks, man. Mm. Yeah, you got to stuff it a little better. Yeah, there's like nothing in there. No, I didn't really have any stuffing. Well, team, as always, thanks so much for tuning in, and we really appreciate it. I'll see you guys back out on the water, and uh, thanks again for watching. See ya.